and today I'm going to list to you the 13 Hebrew words that Palestinians use today. Let's begin. Since we're influenced by the presence of Hebrew speakers, that's why we there's something called borrowing between languages. So we borrow some words from Hebrew, we insert them into our spoken language and we use it daily as if it was an Arabic word. <laughs> like originally. The same happens with Israelis, uh, Israeli Jews who use a lot of Arabic words and I've made a lesson about this. I'll give you the link below if you want to see the most, the 10 most used Arabic words used by Israelis today. Just click here and you will see how we borrow. We tend to borrow a lot of words. We take them exactly the way they are from the language and we answer them in our language and we use it. We use them daily and we forget the fact that they are not our language. Mm? Words from our language. The first and most used word by Palestinians which comes from Hebrew is the word Beseder. Beseder. Now, what is the meaning of Beseder? Beseder means alright. Okay, everything is perfect. Beseder. Keep halak. Beseder. Wallah Beseder. In a normal situation, in a normal sentence of uh, any day conversation between two Arabs, Palestinian Arabs, they would say Beseder. Keep halak. Beseder. Wallah, shu akhbarak ya amma. Beseder. Kul shi tamam. Keep amit bil imtihan. Wallah Beseder. Beseder means okay. Now, in Arabic, we have Hassanan, Jayyid, Bikhair to convey the same meaning but those are standard Arabic words and since we don't speak Shakespearean Arabic between ourselves we speak the spoken or the colloquial which is called the Ammi it's a dialect so we speak the dialect the Palestinian dialect so the same with Beseder it's so much used I call my mom Kif hal yamma Beseder yamma Beseder but without even intention to use a different language you would just simply say Beseder remember the, this list or this video applies only for Palestinian Arabs because Palestinian Arabs are the ones who live uh, or try to live with, Israel, with Israelis and with Hebrew speakers. <laughs> Sorry. All right. The second word that is very much used, uh, it's the word makhshir or it has also a synonym which is the word shalat. Makhshir or shalat. What is the meaning of makhshir or shalat? shalat? Um, it means the remote, the remote control. We have been raised saying "Atin al Makhshir, Atin al Makhshir, like pass me, Marrile al Shalat." So Makhshir and Shalat are Hebrew words. They mean remote. We Palestinian Arabs who lived inside Israel, you wouldn't see anybody not saying Shalat or Makhshir for the remote control. So that's a word that we just borrowed. We take it. We use it in Arabic. Why do we borrow words from different languages? Usually because we don't don't have an equivalent in the spoken language. Like I have to think about the classical Arabic word to say remote. It's not Jihad uh, Tahakum. Yeah, you see, I remember Jihad Tahakum. But imagine like and I'm talking with my mom. It sounds like really non, non, non simple. It really sounds like Shakespearean English, so we wouldn't, we don't use it. I even like I hate this, um, but I even tell it to my daughter, which is uh, Italo-Palestinian. So she speaks Italian and Arabic, Palestinian Arabic. Uh, when I talk to her, I tell her, I still insert the Hebrew word talking to my Italian daughter, Italian and Palestinian daughter. So that's something that we have to try to find the equivalents in our own languages. This is something that enriches us as speaking speakers of the language and this is something I don't like a lot of us borrowing other words. But sometimes, I mean, you don't have um, you don't have any other options just than other than to borrow the word. All right, so shalat and makhshir for remote control. Another word that is very much used by Palestinians today, a Hebrew word which is rotev. Rotev, a'tini rotev. Ana baddi rotev al-salata. Baddak rotev al-salata? Ay rotev baddak al-salata. So rotev is just like one. Within any simple Arabic sentence, you just add rotev in the middle. Rotev means the salsa or the sauce that you would put. In Arabic, we can still, we have an equivalent. We have the word salsa, adin salsa, but 99% of people, Palestinian people, wouldn't say salsa. Palestinian people that are in contact with Israel, like Hebrew speakers. So rotev can be mostly used by Palestinians, not all of them, of course, if you like go deep, like in, if you go to Bethlehem, I don't, I doubt in Bethlehem they would say rotev, they would just say use salsa because we have salsa, which is an Arabic equivalent, and it's easy to say, it's not like jihazit tahakkum. 
Let's go to the next word, which even my grandma used to say. My grandma was born even before the creation of the state of Israel. That we use a lot, a lot, because it's something that we eat daily. It's lachmania. Or lachmania. You can even pronounce it. Haorcha. Lachmania. Lachmania. Lachmania means uh, some kind of pastry. Or like it's, um, it's a baguette. It's a small baguette made in, in the Holy Land. And it has this name since ever. Like we, I don't... I can't think of another name for this. I'm showing it to you now. It's very special. It's fluffy and it's not like um, it's not hard like the French baguette. It's so delicious. <laughs> the lachmania. Lachmania can be also called in Arabic khubzi, but khubzi you would intend the loaf, the Arabic khubz, the bread, the normal bread. bread. But if you say lachmania or lachmania by Palestinians, you know what you're indicating, and it's a Hebrew word which comes from the word lechem in Hebrew. Lechem means bread. So lachmania is like a diminutive, like a small bread, like a bready or something. So it's this small baguette, lachmania, that is used also by, a lot by Palestinian Arabs. We don't have an equivalent for this. Let's like indicate this in Arabic. In Palestinian Arabic, we say lachmania. The next word is the word machsom. Machsom means a barrier, a checkpoint, something that blocks you, a blockade. Machsom. And it means checkpoint. Palestinian Arabs are very well acquainted with Mahsoum. We even give it a, a funny plural. Mahasim. <laughs> Mahasim. So Mahasim is like a Hebrew word that we take it in Arabic and we give it the Arabic plural to it. Okay, so Mahsoum in Hebrew, the plural would be Mahsoumin, but no Arab, none Palestinian Arabs would say Mahsoumin. We would take Mahsoum and we make it into the plural, the Arab way. Mahasim. So Mahsam is a very much used Arabic word. I hope we don't use it and we don't need it anymore. Inshallah, no more Mahsam. Another word that we use a lot in the speech is Mi'anyen. Mi'anyen. Mi'anyen means it's interesting, uh, thrilling, it's exciting. So something that is interesting and exciting, we don't have it in spoken Arabic. We have one word which is in standard Arabic, it's called, we say it, Muthir. Muthir it means exciting or interesting. Um, muthir lil ihtimam, so interesting. So, but muthir is very, very like classical word, like it's really um, heavy Arabic word that we wouldn't use it in the daily uh, life and we wouldn't use it in the dialect. So, since in the Palestinian dialect we don't have, we really honestly don't have an equivalent to say something that's exciting or something that's interesting, so we would use this mi'anyen which means exciting or interesting in Hebrew. So we would like, كيف كانت الحفل امبارح? معنيان, معنيانت كتير. معنيانت also like we would use it, we would transform it from masculine to feminine still in Hebrew. معنيان, something that's masculine, interesting. معنيانت, something that's feminine, interesting. So we take it, we borrow it the way it is and we use it in our um, uh, daily uh, life. All right, so معنيان. كيف كان هذا الدرس? How was this lesson? كيف كان? Another word that we have an equivalent in Arabic and that's why I don't like it a lot and we don't hear it as much as the others because as I told you the others, the other words, we use them because we have no choice. We don't have another choice in the spoken language. This one we have a very good choice but we still use it sometimes in Hebrew. It's the word tov. Tov means good. Okay. Tov. Tov beseder. Sometimes even an Arabic sentence can be tov beseder. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Or good, okay. <laughs> Tov beseder. That's Arabic. That's Hebrew, but used in Arabic. Tov beseder. So Tov means good. Tov is exactly like Tayyib in Arabic, or uh, or Jayid. Jayid. Jayid is like classical Arabic, standard Arabic. Tayyib can be also used in spoken language, just to say, okay, good. Yeah, Tayyib. Do, uh, do you want batik uh, shay? Do you want tea? Tayyib. Ah. Hmm? Okay, Tayyib. Some people would say tov. Why? Why tov, ya habibi? Tayyib. Or mm? mnih. Okay, another like, synonym for tayyib, which means good. Tov, which means good. You can say mnih. Mnih means good in, sp in spoken Palestinian dialect. So why you would say tov what, when you have an option, you have um, uh, uh, the possibility to use between tayyib and between mnih. That's what makes me angry. Don't use another language. Use your own. <laughs> Next word is so much used by Palestinians of all ages. It's the word Ramzor. Ramzor means a traffic light. A traffic light in Arabic, we have a word for it, but it's only in standard Arabic, which is Ishara Dawiya. 
<تصفيق> it sounds even so difficult to say إشارة ضوئية يما شوف الإشارة الضوئية لون أحمر it's difficult it's really not something that in a daily life you would want to say so we would use the Hebrew word رمزور many Palestinians that are not uh, I mean, well acquainted with the language, they even sometimes change the ending from Ramzor to Ramzon, <laughs> thinking that the word originally is Ramzon. It's not, it's Ramzor. We use it a lot, I use it, everybody uses it. All Palestinians use the word Ramzor or Ramzon to indicate Ishara Dawiya, which means traffic light. Nobody would say Ishara Dawiya, and that's for sure. Another word, it's also very much used, it's the word Haluk. Haluk means like um, the uniform or like the robe you would put, like haluk for a doctor, for a um, doctor, uh, haluk a nurse for the nurse, uh, haluk al madrasi, but we don't have a haluk a robe like, or a uniform for the madrasi for school, but haluk conveys the meaning of like the dress of a certain type of job or like the, you know, the uniform. You can just like simply trans uh, translate it as the robe. One piece that you put, like it's like a dress, you put it uh, and then you tie it on your waist. Uh, that's haluk. And haluk in Arabic, I can find, in, in Palestinian Arabic, I can find no equivalent rather than uh, robe. It's not Arabic at all, but we can use it as robe. But everybody, all, ev almost all Palestinians, they would prefer to use haluk. Like my sister is a nurse, Ukhti Mumarrida. وهي بتلبس حلوك كل يوم هي على الشغل تلبس حلوك so it's full sentence in Arabic أختي ممرضة هي بتلبس حلوك my sister is a nurse she wears her حلوك her uniform كل يوم في المستشفى every day in the hospital so that's an, um, an example of an Arabic sentence fully Arabic with the word حلوك which is a Hebrew word inserted in the middle of the sentence another word is the word كينيون كينيون means a shopping mall. It comes from the verb kana in Hebrew. Kana, like not. It means to buy things. Kana. And Kinyon is a place where you buy things. So Kinyon is a shopping mall. Kinyon is a very much used Arabic word, uh, Hebrew word by Palestinians because, again, in the spoken language, we don't have an equivalent. You would say, but the aruh al mall. So you would borrow a word from English, but the aruh al mall. Uh, mostly in the West Bank area and Gaza, they would say, but the aruh al mall. Hmm? I want to go to the mall, to the mall, al mall. Um, it has another meaning. Sometimes it's also you. I mean, it has like the Arabic equivalent, and sometimes it's also used correctly, which is mujamma, mujamma, mujamma tijari. That's an Arabic classical word for the word mall. Mujamma comes from jama, the verb jama to collect, and mujamma is a place where people are collected. Mujamma, collected to uh, buy things. Now, we Palestinian Arabs, the ones that live inside Israel, we don't use mujamma. It's very, like, very too Arabic for us, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, I mean that I I would have preferred to say mujamma, my own language, instead of going and borrowing some other word. But anyways, we rarely, you would rarely hear an, a Palestinian saying mujamma, except uh, for sometimes in Gaza, in the West Bank, they would use the correct word mujamma, or they would say mole, just like borrow it from English, better than <laughs> from Hebrew. Uh, we instead, we would say Kinyon, Palestinians who are like living daily, their, their daily life with uh, Israeli Jews, so with, with Hebrew speakers, we would use the word in Hebrew, which means uh, mole, which is Kinyon. Yumma berah rahat al kinyon u sharat bluzi bi jannin. That's an Arabic sentence. Yumma, I'm talking to my mom. Berah rahat. Yesterday I went al kinyon. So I combined even the preposition with the word kinyon. Arabic preposition a, which means on or to. Kinyon, Hebrew, which means mall. Al kinyon u sharat bluzi bi jannin. And I bought a beautiful, a fantastic shirt. Okay? So, kinyon, mall. The last word is the word klita. Klita means reception. So, في في تلفونك كليتا عطينا عطينا بدي أفصل تلفون. في كليتا is there a reception in your phone? في بتلفونك كليتا عطيني give me. بدي أعمل تلفون أو بدي أفصل. I want to call somebody. So, في كليتا is there كليتا كليتا is Hebrew word which means reception. We use it. Palestinian Arabs we use it because we don't have an equivalent in the spoken language. Of course, in the 
standard we have and I think it's um, Ishara maybe not Ishara you see I have like even difficulty to remember my own language um, the, like my own the, the terms that I don't I, we never use in, in our own language you see a lot of words that Mafish Irsal. I have to I have to get the help of my friend Google. Okay, after consulting my friend Google, <laughs> I was half right because uh, Ishara is the word for signal, and Irsal can be also reception. Uh, and the, like the the term in Arabic to say phone signal is isharat bath. Hmm? Isharat bath. <laughs> Can you imagine us in daily life? <laughs> if you end up isharat bath, <laughs> we don't we don't use it because you, you've seen even I and Arab 100% Arab didn't remember the term to use for phone signal. I had to go and check with Google. So because it's a word that we don't use. I'm curious though, uh, what like this is for Palestinian Arabs. What about other Arabs like Gulf Arabs or Jordanian Arabs? What do you use to say phone signal? I might even Google might be crazy now because I, I I can't find it uh, other than a crazy term which is Sharat Bath or Irsal. And you can even say khat or like line, but it doesn't like um, convey the same meaning that we want to say with reception, like the phone reception. All right, so what we use Palestinian art, we would say klita. Klita, it conveys the meaning of phone signal and we use it in our daily life. If we want to ask about if we have like the signal of the phone, we would use uh, uh, simply and easily the word klita. Okay, so I hope you like this lesson. I hope you like this kind of like a borrowing words from other languages, similarities between languages, especially Hebrew and Arabic that are well known of being enemies they are not there is a, there is a lot of similar there are a lot of similarities between the languages as i told you before they are both semitic languages we have a lot of uh, common uh, grammatical rules only the writing system is different uh, plus even though they are like similar they are complete like they are two separate um uh, languages uh, from which uh, we usually borrow uh, other like words from each language and we use them in our daily life especially in the spoken language I'm talking about the al which is a Levantine dialect the Palestinian dialect in particular where we borrow some words from Hebrew and vice versa also Hebrew speakers in Israel they use a lot of Arabic uh, terms expressions and words that I listed in one of my videos I'll put it again here so you can check it out um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and and follow me on Instagram and on my Facebook page for more updates and more uh, lessons and stay tuned because I'm posting new a new lesson every week so I hope you like this new uh, way of updating my channel stay updated also on my new uh, courses in the Holy Land I have uh, intensive two week intensive courses in the Holy Land coming next I will keep you updated everything all the news you will find them either on my uh, Instagram and on my Facebook page so stay updated and I will I mean I will keep you updated on any news and any opening uh, application opening of my courses I hope you like the sessions and I will see you in a following Arabic lesson with me Maha Ma'a